Alright, so you're wandering through the internet. Entertainment levels are low. You both are about to die of boredom. What do you want to do? I look for a cool new podcast! Yeah, and I assist. Alright, give me an investigation check. Oh yeah, and roll with advantage. Bond's Journal, page 62. We are heading back to town to give our report. It seems that there were giants in the troll moors as well. After soundly defeating the owlbears and taking a good night's rest, we walked around some more and came across two trolls and a fire giant. We clashed and arose victorious. It seems Keo was holding back with the owlbears. He unleashed a giant and mighty storm that boomed across the swamp to defeat our enemies. You guys start heading back uh, after searching the area. Uh, you did notice that the the rods that Ordana was holding uh, started crossing before she put it away. Mm-hmm. Looking around, you don't see anything. It, it was probably under the, the water. As you're walking back, you are seeing glimpses of uh, a floating castle above you. <gasps> Directly above? It, it is more up than forward. Oh. So it is not directly above, but it is in this vicinity. Okay. Uh, you guys keep walking south, and Vordana says, we need to get to the council immediately. They need to know what's going on. And so she's moving you guys along at a fast pace. You guys cover a little more ground. Uh, it still takes you two nights oh. to eventually get out of the... Seeing that, stare of it. Seeing that he has no boots, uh-huh. instead of doing my recast um, comprehend languages, mm-hmm. I'm going to do going to be literally casting and keeping up um, Tensor's floating disc so he can ride on it. Nice. Behind hmm. me. This intern rolls in style. <laughs> <laughs> so um, before we leave where we kill the giant, I'm yep. going to take out our own rods. Okay. I do yeah, a, yeah, you do a quick a circle. Quick turn. So you do a circle, and it looks near the center of this lake is where it's crossing the most. Um, okay. But they're not anywhere near halfway across. So if they're making forty fives, that's about halfway. If it's if it's a one eighty, it's it's gonna be or not forty fives. They'd be nineties. So if they're making nineties, then that's halfway. A 180 is you're on top of it, and then uh, the more parallel they are, the the less it is near. Okay. You. Um, I would offer to slow down ahead. and see if you want to. Well, me too. I, mean, I don't know if we're going to be. I was to thinking go. more along the lines of seeing whether or not they seemed to indicate that the castle. Had mm. Oh no, no, the castle doesn't seem to. Okay. I do voice my concern to, to the group. I'm like. Did we do what we were sent here for before we leave? For Donna, definitely seems yeah. to think so. Because we only found one troll. But we found the fire giant. Right. We took care of and the, the... owlbears that were um, chasing the trolls. The... <laughs> yeah. And uh, giants are pieces of crap, so it was probably his fault. The idea is that they were all being driven out of the Evermores, okay. not that they were in the Ever. She she says she says based on your descriptions. I wouldn't be surprised if this fire giant has been disturbing the ecosystem here. And it's probably just been throwing everything off and creatures are trying to escape to find a more stable area. With the description of trolls and orcs and stuff like that, they're probably smart enough to know that the fire giant's probably going to try and enslave them. Just like what we've seen in the past. Can I cut the fire giant's head off? Yeah, absolutely. I'm taking it with me. Okay. Just drag, drag, drag it. Nice. So, okay. so you guys travel for two nights, and a half a day after that, uh, or just before a half a day, because you're moving at a fast pace, you reach Collinghorn. Your contact there. I leave the head outside of the the village. Okay. Good call. As as like a as like a wording thing. Yeah. Nice. 
like on the Karen, or are you outside the village? Outside the village. Okay, between the moor and like the facing out. The nice, skull. nice. I like it. Tamalin, uh, she says, uh, "Thank you." What information have you brought? Do we kill some stuff? There's a giant. You did. A giant. There were all bears driving the trolls. <laughs> I bought you a present. And she, she, what, what is this present? Proof of our kill. It's at the the foot of your hill. And she, she goes out and she looks, and as she's looking at it, she's just her mouth agape, and she just kind of holds out the letter, like, "What Thank the you. hell is happening?" Like, I take my letter. <laughs> my gold. Right. So, so, uh, she she pulls out the the sack. <clears throat> let's see. Let's count it. So, two knights, and then two knights is four. So, yeah. Yep. So, she tosses you the sack of gold, and she says, uh, she says, the the town is m- m- very appreciative of your work. Hopefully, this hat will keep those away. That was Tamalin? Yeah. I, I think you'll find that you're quite happy with what our uh, blacksmith, Tarry, has done with your, with your cart. And uh, when you go and see the cart, it, it has the canopy, and the cart actually has this lever on it, on the side, mm-hmm. uh, on the inside part, mm-hmm. that you can pull and push, and when you do so, the canopy will fold back and it'll fold <laughs> up, just like a convertible. Uh, so you don't need to, you don't need to un- undo the metal rods and, and all that stuff, or fold up the canopy, you, you just let it back, and then you put it up. Uh, it's quite easy to do, and it's very skillfully crafted. And she says, uh, you know, I know you only paid for just the standard, but we really are thankful for all you've done. And this town does not let people go without thanking them fully. So thank you. My workshop looks awesome. Yeah, yeah. And uh, she says, I'll make sure to tell everyone of, of the deeds that the Obsidian Flame has done for us. Uh, Vordana says, well, we should be on our way. We're going to be hard-pressed to make that uh, that meeting. And you guys said you got to do stuff at Nuranar's, Nuranar's Hold. Is that not right? Mm-hmm. That sounds right. There's uh, horse harnesses that you guys need to drop off. Yeah. And then um, you were told to talk to right. some people in Everland as well. The mm-hmm. delivery. Yeah, the delivery. Can we sell the pelts here, or is there no market for owlbear? Oh, there's a market for owlbear. I'll give you two gold pieces of pelt. That sounds fair. Pretty it. dangerous kill, and then... So, three pelts, right? Six mm-hmm. gold. Six gold. Uh, you find Nymira has been well taken care of. Uh, same with the horses. Mm-hmm. And everything's just in tip-top shape. They did really, really well. The horses have been well fed. Yeah, except for Jer- <laughs> Bill's just like flies. Mm. <laughs> Bill, was, Bill was dressed before we. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Salted Bill. Yep. Yeah. Um, I, I couldn't. Wait, so salted still Bill. Still with us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Bill's salty after that battle. <laughs> uh, so, uh, anyways, uh, Driftwood has been well fed and uh, given the best. Yeah. How yeah. many days was it altogether? We were out there for. Four nights, mm-hmm. so Four five nights. days, I believe. Five days. I pull out a piece of platinum and give it to Staravash as wages. Okay. Very nice. He uh, he takes it and he flips it and catches it and uh, pockets. You might want to <laughs> mark down, or are you marking down what you paid him? Yeah, I, okay. I paid him okay. this time. Yep, yep. Yeah. I thought okay. we agreed that we were going to pay him. Yep, yep. Yeah. Somebody keep track of his loot and stuff, and we'll nail that down later. So, you guys cart up. Uh, is there anything you want to do before before heading out of the open road? <laughs> so, um, so, seeing as I just left my dog to kind of, you know, he is a city dog. He's, though, he's, he's he's he was tied up. City dog. They tied him up to the cart, and uh, they had a nice big pile of like dog slop. Yeah, but um, he's pretty messy. I'm pretty messy. Yeah. So I get out our copper tub and I um, fill it with hot water, <laughs> and the dog and I take a bath. Okay, okay. After after the cobalt is done taking his spa a spa day, <laughs> you guys head out on the road. Put some cucumbers on your ass. Yes. Ah. 
<laughs> and the it dog's stink- like licking your claws. Gets the stink of owlbear off of it. <sighs> <laughs> you guys head out on the road. Cool. And oh, um, I replenish before we go on the road. I replenish our rations. Okay. That's standard, right? Yep. I replenish my javelins. Five. Because uh, I lost three to the burning troll corpse. So Fair. I buy 30 <laughs> rations. And then, yes, uh, same standard rate for the for the javelins. So, you guys are out on the road, quick, and you take a day's travel to get to uh, Nornar's hole. So we're just getting there at, like, dusk or so? Yes, dusk, because he took a bath. Yep. <laughs> Uh, it takes all that long. For I could have done that. In well, you guys got there midday, and then and then you're taking a bath while they're getting ready, and yeah, yeah about dusk. So this village lives just outside the high forest. It's a great place for hunting. You're seeing all sorts of different game darting in and out of this forest off in the distance. And as as you're approaching Wardana, uh, she she's talking about how in the past uh, she's heard of how fantastic this town has been for like uh, rich hunting uh, hunters um, can you can you make a, a history check for me please and then also uh, Manette history check. 11 25 25 he's <laughs> just piss knowledge uh, yeah uh, so what you know you've heard of the town Kinian but you don't know a ton of specifics on it, just that, yeah, it's it's a hunting town, it's whatever. But uh, you have read the history on this town, uh, Minette. I heard we were coming here, so I wanted to right. make sure Read up. knew what was yeah. going on. Yeah, this village on the edge of the high forest grew up around a famous hunting lodge, and it was built over 200 years ago. In its heyday, Nornor's Hold, uh, hosted wild hunts that attracted the wealthiest nobles and merchants of the north. Uh, some who ventured to Nornar's hold never returned, spurring dark rumors that the five human hunting lords, or hunt lords, uh, who ruled Nornar's hold were arranging wanton slaughters uh, to amuse their guests and even allowing their guests to hunt one another. This place was shunned, and the village fell on hard times. That's what you understand of this town. And as you approach, you see exactly what uh, Minette explains to everyone, is this town is barren. People who are out and about in the street have a specific place they need to go, and they are not walking there. It is a very rushed or uh, hustled uh, walk. This, this whole area is kind of gray, um, and in fact, it's raining right now, uh, which adds to the muck and everything like that in town. This town just feels awful. It, it, it feels just depressing. When you, when you reach the town, Wardana suggests that we hitch up at the, uh, at the town's inn and uh, grab a drink and maybe stay the night. Okay. Is that okay with you guys? Mm-hmm. Sounds good for me. Sure. Okay. She says, now with the canopy, we might be able to stay in the in the wagon if you want. Might be able to close up the doors Who's in the back. Who's paying this time? I've been paying a lot. I, I've got little gold. I, I mean, I sleep on ground and in the in the trees. I'm can... uneasy in this town, so I push for camping outside of it. Okay. Oh, outside of town? Okay. Okay. So that's a vote for yeah. staying outside town. Sounds good to me. Before we leave the town, though, is there like a hunting post where hunters sell their game? There is. Would you like to check quick, it out? I want to quick buy some uh, squirrels or other rodent-like animals. Okay. So you, uh, you approach the post. And it's like a trader's post. When you get there, it, it's boarded up. And it, it doesn't look like it's been open for quite some time. <laughs> Only like 20 or 30 years. Um, this whole this whole building is in uh, complete disrepair. The roof is caved in. It just it doesn't look to have been used. <laughs> not for a long time. So, no animals. <laughs> 
So she says, uh, so who are you supposed to meet in town? Um, Town's kind of spooky. You should try and get out of here as fast as possible. Amroth? Well, we can ask around for an Amroth. Uh, no, we had to deliver it for Amroth, I think. Were we supposed to deliver to the Lion Shield Coster or something like that? Uh, it sounds like you're delivering to an Amroth. Uh, Intelligence. I check. light up my pipe. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Nice. Ooh. I just start. Ooh. I start yelling. Hey, we got your order. <laughs> Ten. We're over what, here. Are what am I checking for? We uh, intelligence. <laughs> Eight. Even with a with advantage. <laughs> boom! 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 boom. <laughs> so right, with the look with the ten, you recall enough information to tell you that uh, uh, you need to find Amroth. Seventeen and... yelling round. Okay, one second. You need to deliver to Amroth. Oh, okay. So you're shouting around and looking, yep. trying to figure out. Yep. <clears throat> and this uh, dwarf uh, comes bustling out of the out of the inn, and he's got uh, gray hair. He looks uh, finely, finely clothed, but uh, does not look rich, if that makes sense. Uh, okay. He looks more like he's staying in the castle, you know, the help for the castle type of thing. Yeah. And, uh, it's his work clothes. It's his work clothes, right. And uh, and he's got like this mug of ale and he says... He's uh, got the kind, same kind of look as Starbush has. Right, <laughs> right. And he says, uh, he says, Oi, I'm, I'm Amroth. What can I do for you? We got your shit. The horse harnesses? Yeah. yeah. It's a fuck damn time. I'm like, you need to sign here, here, and here. <laughs> and you just got, yeah. Put so he, he, he takes the paper and he does X's on the on the lines and... Uh, spit on my palm. <laughs> <laughs> and so you spit on your palm and he takes out a sack of coins and puts it on your palm. <laughs> and he says, he says, drop them there. Thanks. Okay, then. We unload the cart. Yep. Right there. Yep. You're and uh, and he says, all, all right, needed. have a good day. And that's it. He walks back in the inn. All right, cool. Let's go. Now, something's odd about this dwarf. He's just a really rude jerk, apparently. No. I follow him into the inn. Okay. Yeah, Keo, Keo's suspicious because you what Keo knows check. about dwarves mm-hmm. is that dwarves spit and shake. <laughs> okay. Go ahead and do an... Insight as well. Nineteen. Nineteen. Insight. Twelve. I have a feeling this Twelve. Just okay. So. Dragging us off. Uh. So nineteen. You get a read on him as uh. He's just. He's about business. He doesn't give a shit who you are. He just he's wants his stuff. It, it's like. Uh, it's like. Uh. The UPS man, right? You don't stop and chat with the UPS man normally. Pull, he drops it off. He leaves. And that's what he expects. Skills. I start weighing okay. coins to make sure they're real. Okay. Yeah. So yep. I, I believe the fact that he is actually Amaroth. And oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Right. I mean, he was just shouting around town. Yep. Of yeah. <clears throat> D&D so, made you suspicious. So what yeah. you see, <laughs> what you see. I don't no, that's, that's valid. When you follow him Something into the inn, this inn is a little hinky. What's weird about it is you expect to be like... Ruffles, <clears throat> right? So like like people are in there like shouting, drinking, uh, having a good time and everything. And it's more just like it's people sitting at tables, not really looking at each other, not really talking, just looking down or staring off in the space and just drinking. Um and, and Amrath uh walks up to the bar, hops like climb hops onto the to the stool there that's meant for a human, slams his mug down. And it seems to be empty. And so the bartender comes over, and Amroth just taps the uh, bar, and the guy fills it up, and he slides him a coin, and he goes back to drinking. No words traded. I walk up to Amroth, mm-hmm. and I'm like, I, I apologize, Amroth. Uh, we, we came all this all right. way with yep. the saddles yeah. in a covered wagon. Yep. These are the finest saddles. And it's raining outside. You want the boxes just sitting there? You sure you don't want to move these to 
somewhere with cover. Oh, I'll take care of him. Don't you worry about that. Okay. I, think our, I think our job here is done, guys. Let's. Uh, he he slams the he slams the ale like professional. You know, just two gulps and it's gone. Right. The He's the standard dwarf. dwarf. Yeah. He's a dwarf. Yep. And he, he's he actually a bit the, slow for a dwarf. <laughs> yeah. It took he, him two tries. Yeah, well, he's getting old. And uh, <laughs> he he wipes his beard and he slams his mug down. And uh, and when he stands up, uh, other a couple other uh, people in the bar stand up as well. Mm-hmm. And and like they don't make eye contact or anything like that. They just walk out as a group and they start like loading these these uh, harnesses up and uh, and they take off and they take off uh, up a hill towards a keep or a hold which is Nornar's hold let him check oh. yeah now that I've finished weighing the gold and have determined that it is real I take the um, passport that he signed off on and I begin to amend the document to be one for our travel to the the meeting for that little enclave. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So, did you guys want to follow, or do you want to continue on to the meeting? So we continue on. Job done. Let's go. I'm getting a weird, like, hive mind kind of vibe from this. <laughs> Very yeah. Cthulhu-like. Yeah. Or like the Thorian and yeah. Mass Effect. We can I always know. come back. To... True. That's very true, Keo. I mean, I was, if if you'd like, we, we, we can come back. We've done the work. Um, we are it is, pressed for time for this, getting the information yeah. to where we... And it seems like need, forever since, you know, we need to keep following up on, on Eifer ages. I mean, yeah. if I, I was, on, I was bar- barely an adult when, you know, he went missing. And <laughs> so... DC. Yeah, I mean, Creepy Town is creepy. Let's just move on. Yeah, come back. Creepy Town will be here when we come back. We can put a, a little way marker on it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, you guys actually, you guys don't rest. What Vordana says is she says... Well, we can just sleep in shifts in the car. Exactly. She, she suggests that with our time pressing and that the Shadow, uh, Shadow Top Cathedral is actually not very far away from here. She says it's... it's uh, less than a half day's march uh, into the forest from here. And so what she does is she the has... The well rested before this. Right? What's that? The horses were well rested. Oh, yes. It's not gonna yeah, happen, absolutely. So. This and, yeah. and you guys aren't marching them fast or anything like this at that point. At this point. So what she does is she jumps up in front mm-hmm. and she, she grabs some Keo and she mm-hmm. says, all right, now pay attention because this is going to be very important as you are part of the enclave. And so what she what she does is uh, while you guys are resting in the back, mm-hmm. she uh, she starts driving the cart directly into the woods. And there's no there's no trail whatsoever. And as she's uh, driving Keo, you see uh, you see shrubs and trees starting to part and mm-hmm. forming paths. And you start to see like uh, uh, different veins of paths, like a uh, bunch of paths being I'm, created and I'm stuff like that. Leaving, I finally feel like I'm getting to the enclave. Right, exactly. You guys, uh, or you, you see that, and she says, "Now, watch for the subtle movements in the in the uh, bushes." And you start to see the bushes nudge one way as you come up on a V mm-hmm. and, and a fork in the road, and she steers the horses down there. And she says, "Now." I'm very tuckered out. Mm-hmm. I am going to leave the reins to you. Mm-hmm. I jump in back and catch some some sleep. Okay. Can you be trusted? Yes. All right. I tell um, Supper to come up here that I need ex- ex- as many extra sets of eyes as possible. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> I know he's a city dog, but being a he's also a good boy. <laughs> he is a good boy. And I, I get Udias too. Okay. So. What I would like you to do I is them to keep a quick eye. You know, I, I yeah. point to them and I explain exactly <laughs> what we're looking for. What I would like you to do I is talk to Boris. You're, are you wearing your tabard? Yeah. Okay. At this point. Okay. So when she crawls in back, you are you're steering the 
And I'll light the bullseye lanterns. Okay. So Fantastic. Yep. <laughs> uh, you're steering the, the wagon, mm-hmm. and I need you to make uh, perception checks for me, please. Uh, when she crawls in back, she says, I would very much prefer if you all kept inside this uh, canopy. We have very magical means of protecting the Shadow Top Cathedral. And if they see any of you who aren't part of the Enclave, you will be attacked. Now, you are under my protection, but that does not stop some of the wild things from attacking us. So, what do you perceive? Huh. This is where things go bad. Straight rolls, right? Yeah. I was trying to cheese advantage any way I could. I don't know if you roll bad. So, I um, light my pipe and concentrate. <laughs> Got your floppy hat on you. Yeah. Doing my wizarding best. Yep. That's a ten. Yep. You uh, you notice the subtle movements and they push you uh, to uh, the I, left. I just about missed it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Who do you? And she tugs in my hat just a little. Yeah. Like uh, goes out and like soars a little bit to the uh, down the path. Yep. Mm-hmm. Hootie has advantage on herself. Oh, oh, she does. Ah, uh, go for it. Is it a she or a he? Hootie. Do you know? It's a bird. Yeah. <laughs> Sight and hearing. Yeah. Oh, it's like, oh, that Hootie has advantage. Yep. <laughs> That's a 14. 14, same thing. Okay. One more for me. Um, I think Hootie's got a plus one. Yeah. 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 I've got a straight. So, that's a 15. Okay. Yep. So be what I notice of Hootie. After about uh, probably about four or five hours, you follow this magical trail, and these trees keep like picking up and walking to the side, and the mm-hmm. shrubs spread out. These actually, these shrubs look a lot like the blights that you fought uh, in Fandolin, but they are lush and healthy. Mm-hmm. They don't. They're not blighted by any means, oh, but okay. they are magical and they're getting up and moving out of the way. And Kimian's got to be feeling terrible cooped in there. Oh, yeah, I, I bet. bet. That axe is not in my hand. Yeah. I'll <laughs> <laughs> be getting whimpering from the back of the car. So what, what you see is all of these, this is called Shadow Tapped Cathedral. Mm-hmm. And uh, what you notice in the in the forest is trees mm-hmm. that are called shadow top trees. These trees grow straight up and uh, no branches for most of the height until the very top where the canopy is. And then it's just sprawled out. It is super dark in here. These are my sorts of trees. Right. It is uh, during the day. It is uh, it is dark in here. It is low light conditions uh, under these trees. Mm-hmm. You reach a specific outcropping and it's almost like a wall of trees Mm -hmm. right and when you reach this wall of trees they part Mm -hmm. and inside you see three figures um Mm -hmm. standing in a circle Mm -hmm. uh and they're talking i pull out my passport (laughs) so you pull up and uh and the horses come to stop Mm -hmm. this is a very large area and i do give each of the horses that Okay, yeah, yeah. Good and Verdana uh, wakes up from her nap and yeah, is like, like Are we Hootie, here? Hootie go. Yeah. Does a quick circle. Well, no, Hootie back, goes back into the pocket dimension. Oh, okay. Some rest. Okay. Good job, Hootie. Scratch behind her. Yeah. yeah. A little bit. Yeah. She, uh, Verdana says, Are we here? We're always here. And she, like, peeks out the door and she's. Okay, okay. And she spreads the doors open, and you all see this as well. As ever, you're taking things in, the trees start moving in. This is the first time you've seen any of these trees moving, and they create like a wall. I knock my pipe, pipe, pipe out. I put it away. Okay. And Vordana jumps down, and she uh, she starts talking loudly as she walks around the, uh, around the wagon. And she says... I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I know I'm late, but I have news of the most importance. And uh, Keo, mm-hmm. you see a gnome with gold hair. Yeah. Um, it's, almost, it's almost like the reddish hair that David the gnome has when, when you're taking on the gnome look. David? Yeah, David. 
Uh, but this is, uh, mm -hmm. this gnome actually looks very similar to that gnome, but it has like a uh, golden blonde hair. Okay. And uh, from this gnome comes a voice that says, That's all right, Vordana. And, uh, and the gnome starts to waver. Uh, you all are turning this corner and you see, you see this uh, small gnome start to waver and disappear. And when it does, a ancient gold dragon erupts from it. I'm a, like a shape-shifting or a polymorph. I try to, I don't want to cause trouble, but I slyly look into my pouch that I keep on me. And yeah. Check the scale. Yeah. Like looking for color. Yeah, you're like, yep, yep, that looks... It looks about right. I mean, yeah. it's it's kind of hard to tell though. Yeah. So um, when you're looking at this dragon, it's got like these gold tendrils that come off from its mm -hmm. snout, and its body is super lean and muscular. Mm -hmm. The scales themselves are so tight knit that it looks like they're stretched across the body that it contours the body. It doesn't mm -hmm. bulk out like like big dragon scales. They sit sleek. Uh, you notice that these that its eyes don't have pupils, that they're like pools of molten uh, gold. You get this uh, sense of warmth that rolls off of off of the dragon. Is my spellbook doing anything? Uh, not that you're noticing. Okay. Let me describe the others. So there's the gold dragon, and then to the uh, to the right of the gold dragon is a human uh, a human that looks like a barbarian. Mm -hmm. has uh, red marks etched into its sides of its head. <laughs> then, uh, taking up position next to the barbarian is Vordana. She walks over and stands to complete the circle. Next to her is a small gnome, this dragon. He says, uh, Come, gather round. And so begins the meeting of the masters of the wild. I shall start. I have learned under Mount Hamahast, the great furnaces of Iron Slag have been relit by the giant lord Duke Zalto. I do not know why this is, but I believe it concerning considering the history of those furnaces. What information do you bring, Vordana? And she, she says, well, I've only experienced a little bit, but maybe... These folks that I've run into on the road can explain. I'm, my eyes are like big as dinner plates. Yeah. Because I've never seen a giant of this proportion before. Oh yeah, and this is ancient, so this sucker is massive. And basically... Uh, a dragon. dragon. Yeah. Okay. Gold is my god, as a Zentarum. So sure. I am basically... And this is this is my god, essentially. Mm -hmm. And I'm walking up to the, the dragon getting dangerously close. Yep. And I'm basically like <coughs> looking looking up at him, like with my hand out. Don't, don't touch the dragon. Don't. Says, Meanwhile, Jesus. I'm kinda of standing back a little, <laughs> little shy. Yeah, the the dragon like kind of ruffles up and he's like, I would not suggest touching me, half orc. What information do you have? I fall to my knees. <laughs> and I'm basically bowing. That is that is not necessary. No one need bow before Epito. I um, I kinda nudge Manette, because I'm I'm scared to talk. Okay. Because I'm i I'm hopeful, but I'm also afraid that, you know. <laughs> you you Yeah, Q mm -hmm. thinks it's his dad. Sure. But he's not sure. He, he doesn't want to like ruin things. <laughs> Aww. So. <laughs> uh, so we've so been we traveling the land a little bit and run into a few giants now, and they seem to be searching for a number of artifacts using some old old magic. What kind of giants? Fire giants, mostly. I'm going to pull out my Thanks. scroll case, pull out a piece of paper, and hastily draw a map marking X's where we found the... Fantastic. Things. So, I, 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 I believe everything that we have 
thought directly have been fire giants. Except for yes. the hill giants outside of the Tower. Okay, the yep. hill giants, yep, <clears throat> that were not necessarily They're... divining the location of <laughs> these things. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, the fire giants seem to be searching for things, and we've attempted to thwart few recovery attempts, but we're only one band of adventurers. Uh, Vordana says, Aye, okay. and they have these. And she pulls out the rods of the Von and Dad, and she hands them to the claw of the uh, dragon. And he looks at them, and it takes a little bit of time, and he says, This bodes ill for dragons. These are the rods of the Von and Dad. The Von and Dad was a massive construct built by the fire giants of old. Built to destroy all dragons. Dragons and giants have always been enemies. Um, I hold out the map and I'm just like, here's where they are. And I'm just like, kind of stuttering. He, he, uh, he like daintily grabs it with his claw mm -hmm. and he, he like looks at it and then he hands it like as a, as a circle around. He says, uh, Interesting, you have, uh, you have gold flakes in your scales, kobold. You must have quite the lineage. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not gonna go I'm not gonna say it outright. I, I nod, I nod. And my, um, my tendril mustache, mm -hmm. like, shakes as I do that. Mm -hmm. All right. I, um, I step forward. Uh, up till this point, I had been you know, keeping my eyes averted and stuff, mm -hmm. playing the blind guy thingy up again. Sure. Uh, and he but, says, he says, I know you're not blind, Asimar. <laughs> so I transform into the angelic form and float up a little Ooh. bit. Nice. And I say, I've received visions from my gar my guiding angel, <laughs> showing me a stone giant torturing a bronze dragon. I believe this is also connected to a floating castle where our friend was taken. Your friend, you say? Yes. What's his name? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> no, She's, no, it's, it's says, I forgot. I see. I would expect nothing less from you and your kind. Now, let us open the floor up. Brickleworm, what kind of information do you bring? I have heard from my Triton friends off the coast of Daggerford that after Queen Neri's death, King Hikaton has disappeared. They have reported low levels of food in their area and have expressed that they are worried about an abomination that might have came through from the Abyssal Plain. Other than that, I'm hearing similar reports about the giants running rampant across the countryside. Frost giants have been raiding coastal towns and uh, causing general havoc. Yeah, but I mean, it's whatever. I, I, this is what, this is the information I find. Uh, I don't know. How about you, Ron? It's Ron. <sighs> the clans are starting to get restless. Fire giants, hill giants, and now stone giants at dead stone cleft are awakening. I fear my axe will taste blood once again. Hell. Even the stupid hill giants have built a stronghold near the southwestern edge of the high forest. Grudhung is what they call it. They have assaulted the city of Greenfields, and I feel they may try again. And next time, they may succeed. We, the Emerald Enclave, lost many in the battle, all due to the pompous half-orc you put in charge, Brickle Worm. Hey, hey, hey! The guy said he was up and up. I didn't know he was an alcoholic. That matters not, Brickleworm. Now, I have also heard that these hill giants have allied themselves with the Ice Shield clan. I fear that war will come upon us soon again. That's all I have to report. Thank you, Epito. Well said, Rund. Now... I have something that I need to share with the group. I have a guest. And in that moment, the trees start to part 
and this large, bluish, giant figure comes stomping through into the clearing. You all see this frost giant in front of you with furs draped over his shoulders and a massive pack uh, hanging off of his back. He has across his shoulders a hilt with a massive axe, uh, axe head on the end. He introduces himself as Harshnag. As he finishes introducing himself, a small shadowy figure pops up from his shoulder. And you hear, Hey guys! It's Eifer. Hey everybody, uh, it's Alan, your DM. And uh, I wanted to say thank you from the cast and crew for listening to Roll With Advantage. We really appreciate it. If you feel like you want to support the podcast or um, uh, even want to get on the podcast in all sorts of different ways, go ahead and check us out at Patreon. uh, patreon Patreon.com backslash Roll With Advantage. We've got all sorts of different support structures uh, that have got fun little things for each of the levels. If you can't support monetarily, comments and subscriptions go a very long ways. So if you could comment in iTunes or on YouTube, uh, that would help out the podcast so much. We also love to interact with our fans. Uh, If you use the hashtag RollWithAdvantage on Twitter, or you can post in our subreddit, we we will be happy to uh to engage with you guys um it's super fun way to get to know some of us and uh you get to ask questions about your favorite characters um or about the world uh what's going on in the background stuff like that um we also want to say a big thank you for incompetech.com and BattleBards for letting us use their music uh and sound effects They do a fantastic job, and I highly suggest you guys go check them out. Um, Just beautiful work from everybody there. For a full list of the pieces we use, uh, go ahead and check out the description, and uh, you'll find it there. So, thanks for listening, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye!